Greeting to all the students. Welcome to Global Online. Here we are back with our NTA UGC Net Paper 1 preparation for 2022 batch. And you are, as you all are aware that we have started since yesterday, we have started conducting a quick 60 minutes crash course for all the units. Yesterday we have completed teaching aptitude unit. Today we are going to do communication unit wherein we have targeted entire revision in 60 minutes. So before we start with the session, a quick uh, glimpse at what does Global Online has to offer. So Global Online uh, has Global Online has taken up the crash course for a, a paper one, a complete crash course, which consisting of which consists of daily live lectures, notes on all the topics uh, last year, 10 years question papers, test series comprising of 2500 plus MCQs which you can get with the help of global down, which you can get at global online app also, or you can ping us on the WhatsApp number in case uh, the fees for the same is 3,500, but right now 30% off is going on. So the same course is available for 2450. If you're going on the app, you can get first, you can download the app with the help of Google play store, get registered with the help of mobile number. And once you enter, you can see this interface where you have, you know, paper one crash course or a course, which is, uh, that is called as paper one, uh, course, wherein once you enter the, the content part, you have all the uh, folders in the form of unit as per your syllabus, each folder consists of theory lectures, MCQ lectures, notes, uh, mock test and evaluation test. Evaluation test is, you know, taken as in practice for, uh, students to give them the glimpse of the final examination. We also have paper two notes and MCQs available with us. The subjects for paper two is reflected on the screen. Uh, the same uh, is the price price for the same as 1500. You can get it on 30% off right now, which is going. So the cost of the fees is 1050. So you can get in touch with us on the given WhatsApp number and um, can ensure that you are you know preparing yourself best for the upcoming examination which is just next to corner so yes so let's start the session for the day wherein you have uh, in communication you have totally five questions total marks allotted to our uh, 10 so every question carries you know two marks now uh, before we go or before we start we will just have a look at the syllabus also so syllabus comprises of communication meaning types and characteristics it also comprises of effective communication that is verbal nonverbal intercultural and group communication as well as classroom communication Definitely, there is a question seen from this barriers to effective communication and mass media and society. Apart from this, models also have added and I have added some extra points in communication, which we will have a look right now. So yes, uh, communication is nothing but the word communicare, which is a Latin word uh, that is communicare or communist. It means to share or to make common. So communication is basically sending and receiving information one-to-one uh, -one or between the group of people or face-to-face -face with the help of communication devices. So it is the one, the sender is the one who sends the uh, communication that is initiates the communication uh, where the, the message is transferred or uh, into the thoughts that is encoding. So on encoding, this question is there. Encoding and decoding questions are definitely seen. The message is sent to the receiver and the person who receives the message and the receiver must decode or interpret the message. So the language involves our symbol signs, you know, and, and it's culture that speaks with the help of what? With the help of language. Effective communication is the one which is which helps to understand the concepts. It helps to, you know, put the concepts in a different way which is intended by the sender and <clears throat> at the same time it indicates you know the sharing of uh, language and culture as well as understanding of language and culture the components of communication you can say or communication cycle starts with sender it's initiates with sender ends with receiver sender encoding the message that is transforming the ideas with the help of message that is the channel and decoding the message that is you know uh, the, the the receiver understands in order to understand the message has to decode the message only when the receiver gives the feedback the cycle of the communication gets over uh, distraction is a part of the cycle that is noise so if you can see the components so these are the basic components of communication you can get a question on components also so you have to be very careful that is context okay uh, Tender encoding message channel decoding receiver feedback noise these are nothing but 
the components elements and factors of communication and it gets the cycle gets completed only after the comment after the feedback then you have the next part that is uh, Encoding and decoding, I have specifically explained this very well. Many students have a doubt in this topics. Then questions are seen. So encoding is nothing but turning thoughts into communication. The encoder uses the medium to send a message. The medium can be phone call, email, text message, face-to-face -face, meeting or other communication tool. The encoder should always take into account any noise, you know, that is a distraction before, you know, the message is, you know, uh, sent because noise is resulting into a distraction or it can be, uh, it, it will definitely not help the message to, you know, uh, uh, the message cannot be clearly or properly understood. So decoding is the process of turning communication into thoughts. So be careful. The statements are given for decoding and encoding. You should be able to answer them. Then seven C's or four S uh, seven C's or principles of communication. Sometimes these principles are coming as a part of your uh, match the following, or they can there can be a direct question. Two thousand nineteen also the question was seen, so be careful with that because after two years maybe the cycle can uh, sorry. After two years, the repetition can happen, but this is very common. So you should, it's simple. Just you need to remember the C's of communication. That is completeness, concreteness, courtesy, correctness, clarity, consideration, conciseness. So when we say complete, it means it is, in, it is, including, it is including all the facts required for learning. Concreteness, it means it is very specific. Courtesy indicates the commitment and affection. Correctness indicates, you know, uh, appropriately addressing the audience. Clarity gives a clear and specific goal to the message. Consideration, that is to consider receiver's interest. And conciseness is nothing but, you know, the least possible words used to communicate the message. Apart from uh, seven Cs, you also have four S. That is effective communication comprises of four S. Now that includes your shortness, the strength, the sincerity, and the simplicity, which is part of what, which is a part of effectiveness of communication. That is four S of communication. Now, apart from this, the another uh, main uh, skills which are required in communication are listening, speaking, reading, writing. So listening skills makes, you know, uh, or gives a meaning to the language spoken listening okay and speaking skills it tries to understand you know the language or it helps to understand what when and how to speak with the correct pronunciation uh, reading gives a gateway of knowledge looking at what the you know printed symbol is or translating them into appropriate components and writing is nothing but the linguistic ability which is used you know with the language proficiency uh, including the grammar uh, selection and of the text. So the characteristics of effective communication, so how the effective communication has to be. So it there has to be a clear message. The message should be correct. Now see, when we talk clarity, correctness, just now I taught you. So when we talk clear, it means you know the message should be very specific. Correct, it means the message should be uh, properly addressed to the audience. So this all things you have to keep in mind because the question can be twisted in any form. A complete message with all the facts, precise message up to the point, reliability, which is, you know, completely reliable, consideration of the recipient and the sender's courtesy. So you can see the effective principles uh, are, you know, somehow the characteristics of communication also principles of effective communication and characteristics and one and the same statement questions you should be able to answer. Now, the next important topic where the questions are expected, that is levels of communication. So we have various levels, intra-person, intra interpersonal, group communication, public communication, mass communication. So starting with intra-personal, that is communicating with oneself. You're talking to a, a, I mean, a single person. So it's communicating with oneself is called as intra uh, so it is basically used to take a decision, to introspect, to analyze, to make oneself comfortable with the situation. If it is you no know, uh, interpersonal, so it is interpersonal, it means it is between two people. It can be either planned or it can be unplanned. The effectiveness depends upon, the effectiveness of the message depends upon understanding the parties and proper articulation of the message. So how the message is properly articulated. Now, here I have written the types of power also because many a times this concept was seen 
in the previous year question paper. So I have just taken it, you know, uh, so that you can understand it and you can use it in your, uh, I mean to say, you can just brief it out, okay? So that's, that's the reason I have taken this as the topic. Now let me one by one explain you. So what exactly it indicates or what basically talks about. So when we, uh, when we talk about power, it is nothing but just the capability or, you know, the ability to act. So you to communicate. So different types of powers, which, you know, which we have, let's, let us go one by one to understand all the powers, which we have listed. So talking about expert power. So expert power is nothing, but you know, the one who has expertise with the technical knowledge, as well as the experience. That means the knowledge and experience togetherly gives, you know, the power to a teacher in order to communicate the, in the, in the, to the students. So the teacher, when we talk about expertise power, a teacher should be, you know, uh, having a mastery over the subject the teacher is handling and the experience. So this will help, you know, the, to so that the students will have uh, trust. The bonding of the teacher-student will definitely enhance with this power. Now, when we say referent power, so referent power is a type of, you know, uh, influencing power. So here the, uh, through the qualities uh, with, you know, trust, respect, honesty, the, the, the teacher can try to uh, create the bonding within the students. So the, the person, uh, I mean to say, who uh, holds the referent power, so the one who has, you know, excellent interpersonal skills. So when you are talking about uh, teacher communicating with the students, so in if the teacher is talking with referent power, it means teacher is having an excellent skills and that will help the teacher to build the confidence in the students. So that is very, very important. Then we have information power. So information power is basically the factual information which you are putting across. Uh, sorry, third and fifth, I have just repeated it, but I just, just you need to erase it once. So information power is, you know, the facts, the 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 knowledge, uh, the actual information or, you know, information up to the date is uh, especially uh, like, for example, the teacher should be, you know, uh, be very much informative loaded so that the teacher pass the same to the students and the students get something, you know, to learn on a daily basis. Then we have is the legitimate power. So legitimate power is something which gives you the authority. So the like, like, for example, teacher has a subject authority, teacher has a classroom authority. So it is something which helps you to you know um, demonstrate your skills because of your power. So legitimate power helps you know to uh, understand what exactly is required and accordingly to you know delivered it. Then we have next is your coercive power. So basically, this type of power is something which is um, forces the people to to do work you know uh, with the help of your authority so it is basically uh, you have that power so you have that uh, uh, authority to get the things done by you know but that by that force so like for example you make the students understand it in this that sense of power which the students helps to you know get it through so these are the types of powers so how these powers can be uh, definitely different types of powers which has been required in the classroom communication and how these powers will help the teachers to have a control uh, and you know to create a best atmosphere in the classroom so that is interpersonal communication now difference between interpersonal and intrapersonal so intra it, it is oneself interpersonal is between two people so intra happens you know in the form of sensing thinking perception evaluating on your own self. Whereas interpersonal, it happens, you know, with uh, exchanging and sharing of information or idea of between two or more persons. So when we talk about intrapersonal communication, it involves only the communicator is involved over here. Interpersonal communication, two persons are involved. That is nothing but it is called as interpersonal. So media intrapersonal communication, it is basically does not require any media or channel. Whereas interpersonal communication, it is verbal and non-verbal. Intrapersonal, it is, you know, does not go beyond the person's mind, whereas interpersonal, it informs, you know, it goes from one mind to another mind. So intrapersonal is invisible and whereas interpersonal is visible in nature. Now, uh, yes. So formal and informal communication, that is another type of communication. So when we say formal, which is deliberately structured, planned, organized, you know, uh, which has... Um, 
uh, official uh, way of uh, reflecting the things which has a legal authentic or oral way which can be pressed easily but which takes time so no for, 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 i mean when i say formal fun communication is something which is very systematically officially and uh, you know very uh, carefully drawn up but when i say that it is informal communication is something which is very spontaneous which is very you know unstructured you can uh, which is unplanned and systematic unauthorized it is uh, unofficial it is flexible uh, it is basically you know uh, in the form of rumors or gossips and it cannot be stressed it is just usual it, you you can say it is next to casual okay so formal communication and informal communication there were questions seen recent one or two cycles not if very great questions are seen but you should remember this again this plays an important role in communication so next one we will go for the next yes so next is a group communication so group communication is a commission a communication sorry which happens between uh, two or more members in the group so it is used to discuss and finalize the outcomes based on the objectives now a uh, public communication so when we say uh, public communication is a communication which the sender broadcast a message okay either formally informally and uh, it is discussed uh, and the finalization of the outcome is based on the objective so what was the objective to use the communication and whether the objective is satisfied or not then we have the mass communication where you just require internet media television radio newspaper magazines in order to address a larger audiences and there is no personal connect so that right now you know youtube you can say is one of the example of mass communication then we have yes downward and upward communication questions are seen on this so when the information flows downward that is from top to bottom it is called as downward communication with an objective to just provide an information or instructions uh, your distortion can takes place unconsciously whereas this communication is formal in nature and it has you know it is uh, it's a common form of communication with a routine activity so this is a very routine way of you know communicating in an organization when we say upward communication it is something which you know a sender sends uh, that is the lower level sends the information to the executives and then it turns to the higher level so it is basically to feed, provide the feedback on the objective of uh, is a basic objective that is to provide feedback to the superior so it is uh, like because in case of upward communication information can be distort distorted easily here the information is uh, there is a scope of distortion over here to ensure the effective of upward communication there should be more positive attitude which is required and it is not occurred with an on a routine basis it only takes uh, place in specific play, uh, conditions now here you get questions on horizontal and vertical but with examples uh, there are questions even recently seen but uh, there is no direct question with the theory they have given you the examples like for example if your uh, same line of teachers are working in the college with different departments so it is called as horizontal you know communication so you have to be careful with the example reading so horizontal communication which fall, flows between the same level of people it is you know it is uh, it helps to coordinate with various departments the flow of communication takes place in the straight line uh, and it is suitable for you know uh, the sender as well as it's the receiver uh, because both are at same level so understanding level is same and it it is between example i have given as purchase and sale sales manager so both are on the same line designation wise so communicating communication between them is this will will be called as horizontal communication vertical communication communication flows between different uh, between people of different levels okay it normally coordinates the activities of superiors and so subordinates it may flow as an upward or a downward communication so it can be from top to bill, bill bottom or bottom to top such communication generally uses you know the written procedure and methods communication between like for example sales manager and the executive and the agent so it can be as i said it can be downward upward or it can be you know uh, both ways now 
we have diagonal communications horizontal and vertical i have done the diagonal communication is a cross functional communication so from one department to another that is vice president of sales sends an email to the vice president of manufacturing here the designation is given just to uh, you know highlight the example just see the department manufacturing to marketing or marketing to finance so it is basically the cross functional means from one department to another okay so horizontal and lateral com horizontal communication is also called so this many a times the student gets confused so it is also called as lateral communication so lateral communication uh, wherein it is formal and it is basically the concern is with respect to advice problem solving or coordinating the activities when we say uh, yes that is one uh, that year we get that concept is over now where uh, this is one of the topic which i have seen in one of the question papers so i've just written it out Uh, maybe it is repeated because it is recently uh, used so when i'm saying uh, level a level there are four levels a b and c when i say level a it is with reference to semantic noise which you know where the message gets distorted due to ambiguity a level b that is source due to, so it the the noise may be you know due to speech issue like mumbling lip sync stammering level c that is channel noise maybe the poor quality of uh, sound quality in the form of cable network or broadcast media or level d is basically the psychological noise which occurs from preconceived notions communicator uh, notions communicators bring to uh, for means when when the communicator bring it to uh, you know uh, have the conversation between each other so there they have given this level to be recognized so you should remember this maybe in any other form they can use this question so you have to you know know this question now yes connotation and denotation many students get confused over here also so let me clear this meaning properly so when we say connotation it's nothing but you know the personal and cultural meaning which you know uh, with reference to the word where a denotation is a a clear dictionary meaning so blue i have given an example blue it's color so the dictionary meaning is color without feelings that you know uh, that may be a feeling of sadness red is feeling of love whereas dictionary meaning is red is a color you know so here the danger feeling of love so all this comes in your connotation connotation can be positive can be negative so like 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 an example i said red red indicates the color of love also red in red indicates the color of danger also so it depends upon how it is you know the meaning is taken connotation can change from culture or you know personal perspective also whereas denotation it is not classified it is you know it is used as the way it is represented in the dish, the dictionary meaning and uh, when we say denotation it remains same whether with respect to culture or with respect to you know uh, personal experience there is no change in the meaning with respect to denotation so please remember you can remember it easily denotation dictionary so d stands for dictionary and c stands for cultural meaning so that is how you can uh, make it easier for you to remember yes the next uh, actually this this topic uh, actually belongs to teaching aptitude but here the topic was covered in the form of communication so i have just brought another topic that is zone of proximal development so proximal development zone is this that is the intersection so where we talk here something which is already known by the child something the child or the learner does not know and something the learner knows in association with teachers or peer groups so this is the concept which is given by witkowski so the zone of proximal development is nothing but a here key construction to the theory of learning so th this is nothing but it is a space between what a learner can do without a assistance and the, what a learner can do with the guidance in collaboration to its peers so the zone of the proximal development is something which is related to guidance that is in the form of communication uh, to the learner so yes apart from this there are something some important terms which were found in the question paper so that i have just men mentioned it out scaffolding so scaffolding is nothing but the activities which is provided by the teacher or the peer competent peer to support the student in order to lead the uh, zone of proximal development so here in one of the uh, examination this word was used so scaffolding is something which is related to zone of proximal development where the teachers and the peer group support the learners in order to you know understand the things which is not known and support is tapered off it means it is removed 
uh, when it it you know when the it becomes unnecessary. So scaffolding you know is removed from a building construction uh, when the things are you know properly taken care of. So so student will be able to be <coughs> complete the task on his own when it is understood the scaffolding is taken out. Then next is uh, yes. So he with Kosi has defined this you know the role of teachers and the others in supporting the learner's development and providing the learner with the next level of you know uh, or pro supporting the learner with the next level or next stage. So zonal zone of proximal development is nothing but you know the number of the tasks which is which a child can perform with the help of guidance. Um, but cannot do it independently. So scaffolding is something which is a support mechanism. So that's the reason I've highlighted the word in case if you get that. A support mechanism which is for, which given to the learner in order to perform a task, okay? Now, <clears throat> verbal and non-verbal communication. Yes, here also you can see a lot of questions on this. So verbal communication is the one uh, wherein you have, you know, the, it's a process to communicate through words, whereas non-verbal is where the words are not used. So formality, that is degree of formality is more in more as compared to non-verbal. So it means formality has to be there in your in your verbal communication. Whereas in non-verbal communication, it is based in no case, it's not required, no formality is required. Verbal communication should have a legal evidence. It has a larger scope. Uh, it's a face-to-face. -face. I'm just, you know, first focusing on that. It can be in the form of face-to-face, -face, video call, a conference or interview, or it is more consistent in nature. But if you see with respect to non-verbal, so there is no documentary evidence. There is, you know, the scope is limited. Uh, facial expressions with respect to the body language or gestures, you know, can be used. And yes, there is lack of consistency in, you know, in the communication process. You can see in non-verbal. So you have a core topic that is intercultural communication. So intercultural communication is the one which refers, you know, between the people from two different cultures. So it is something which is from two people from two different culture. So intercultural Intercultural communication is something which is very symbolic, interceptive, transactional, contactual, uh, in which people from different cultures create a shared meaning. So inter inter intercultural communication, you need to keep in mind so because that is also very, very important uh, in order to understand, you know, uh, the, the communication meaning with respect to cultures. Now, yes. So physical aspects of nonverbal communication. So... Let's understand uh, this. You can get in any form. Uh, many times these questions are seen. So kinesthetic, when we talk about kinesthetic, it talks about body language. That is, you know, uh, in any form, it can be tapping, facial expression, winking, uh, eye movements. When we talk about proximies, that is proximity, a use of space uh, in order to, you know, when a distance in order to indicate uh, Proximies is basically a use of space. Haptic touch, oculus is eye contact, chronomics is waste, use of time. O uh, sorry, all factors is smell, vocalus is the tone, sound symbols, which you are listed. Silence is a pause or to wait. Posture, that is, you know, position of the body, adornment uh, with reference to jewelry, clothing, and hairstyle. And locomotion is walking, running, staggering, limping. So you limping, sorry, you need to know this words because many times it is used in some or other form. So same thing I have done, but I have here, I have given a diagrammatic presentation. So body uh, postures, that is kinesthetic, eye contact, that is oculus, touch elements in the form of haptis, personal elements in the product of proxemies, para language in the form of vocalis, time elements in the form of chromics, physical environment or personal appearance. So these are all the aspects or categories of or you can say non-verbal communication. Then we have uh, types of communication. So types of communication is verbal, non-verbal, written, listening, visual. So we have done all these things, but I have given you this, you know, for a clarity. So verbal like face-to-face, -face, telephone, Skype, Zoom, video call, chatting with friends, non-verbal eye contact, body language, facial expressions, tone of voice, posture, gestures, Written communication in the form of email, uh, report, bulletins, later, manual, telegram. Listening communication, that is active listening. Whereas visual communication in the form of image, infographics, video, and visual presentation. So verbal communication, 
which comprises of 35 percent and non-verbal communication more which comprises of 65 percent uh, with facial communication facial expressions tone uh, movement appearance eye contact gestures and postures so if you take uh, the rule of dr albans merben uh, theory or you know uh, person element so seven percent of the spoken words uh, what is the weightage you know seven percent weightage is taken by spoken words 38 percent by voice and 55 percent by body language so it is concluded that voice tone of voice is stronger as compared to emotion uh, emotion or then the actual word okay so yes this year again uh, from the questions i have seen so classroom communication is basically you know the social ident basis of social identity teaching is a social activity which involves both teacher and student so direct communication allows immediate feedback teachers inculcate the power of values such as social economic and culture so this was one question in the form of maths the following related to communication so i've just listed so classroom that is social identity teaching is a social activity between teacher and student direct communication that is feedback and teachers inculcate values in the form of economic social and culture then yes this also year also student gets confused between empathy and sympathy so teacher always has to be empathetic empathetic it means teacher should understand the feelings of student sympathetic is sympathy is nothing but a pity feeling which is wrong which should never be uh, you know expressed by the teacher that means that to student teacher is pity on the student and will never allow the student to progress it's like that apathy it means lack, lack of interest and antipathy it means you know um, dislike a feeling of uh, dislike or aversion yes so barrier to communication now so barriers can be in the form of physical barriers it can be because of time space climate noise choice of medium barriers with the help of wrong choice of medium semantic barriers that is connotative meanings now i have told you what is denotative and connotative cultural meanings which you have said, read cultural barriers that is diversity of culture psychological or attitudinal barriers because of moods attitudes and relationship barriers which is because of uh, which are which are caused by the perception of reality in the form of level of understanding and comprehension so you on barriers you get a basic question over here so yes sorry this slide is thing i think is repeated you can just skip this because i have just taught this earlier also uh yes now two important concepts surveillance and semiotics so surveillance is nothing but it implies collecting monitoring processing and interpreting the information it is one of the feature of mass communication so for mass communication you can use this it was a question in previous year question paper only semiotics it is basically a branch of linguistic you know studies how the science can be uh, you know you can interpret science with the different languages it is a study of how meanings are assigned to the science and it deals with both connotative as well as denotative so connotative and denotative i've already done and made you understand very well synchronous or synchronous yes so live with all the participants at the same time so live lecture going on it will be considered as synchronous whereas synchronous it means it is a pre recorded session where many of them can watch the video uh, you know um, with i mean to say at whatever time which is feasible to the audiences okay so now we have yes mass communication so objective is to uh, understand the meaning discuss the elements studies the importance to uh, understand the features and the need of mass communication which happens with large audience with uh, you know uh, like which helps to uh, send the form of message which helps rapid distribution and low cost to the consumers uh, characteristics it is heterogeneous in nature it can be transmitted publicly or no privacy short duration of message feedback it's indirect or it does not exist or it can be delayed only then we have something that is you know cost per exposure is minimum source belongs to the organizations or to the institution and it's mostly one way form of communication so functions of mass media can be in the form of information education socialization entertainment uh, that is education and entertainment that is edutainment also political awareness cultural transmission and catalyst to the development that is important to the development then something with respect to social media and trans, trans traditional media so social media it is one which shares ideas information and messages traditional media is the one which helps to you know understand the uh, communication such as television radio newspapers magazine so social media is a two way conversation traditional media is something which is based on you know one way 
social media gives a lot of freedom uh, to the information uh, whereas traditional media gives you know uh, means what is telecasted what is broadcasted what is uh, published uh, social media gives uh, scope to you know uh, media in the form of you know consumption which means the target whereas traditional media talks about two way communication and uh, addressing to the targets now yes in communication this is very important one thing which is uh, uh, to be noted so communication basically limited effort wherein the limited effort, theories you can say theories of communication there are four theories limited effect effect theory is one approach to the mass media which claims that the media has limited effects on the audiences or on the society so when i say gatekeeping so gatekeeping is nothing but a process where the information is filtered and then it is broadcasted class dominant theory where the information uh, you know there is a mechanism in order to ensure that you know a majority of the population thinks about uh, the society or you know the connection with the social class and culturalist so it interacts with you know the meaning images and messages with respect to what with respect to the uh, culture okay now now this is the last uh, part the basically i have covered all the models because i have seen many questions no coming out of the models of communication so i have just you know included this models also so let's see let's revise this models properly so basically the models of communication are divided into linear interactive and transaction so under linear it is one way communication where the feedback is not present it is you know uh, it is a primary communication whereas transactional is formed a transaction model is based on what on the linear model the sender receives the communication uh, sorry sends the sender with the uh, sender communicates with the receiver without any feedback and it is also called as one way communication or one way process so sender message channel noise and receiver there is no feedback present over here second is the interactive model that is which we have learned over here so interactive it is two way communication feedback is not simultaneous it can be slow or indirect okay now uh, sometimes the communication can be linear if receivers do not you know reply to the sender so the interactive model indicates the mediated on internet based communication and last one we have is transactional i have highlighted the important points where the it is two way with an immediate feedback the feedback is direct and very fast it is the receiver is compelled to provide instant feedback the major difference between interactive and transactional is indirect indirect feedback whether it is direct feedback over here so under linear model so these are the models so this this models no will give you a clear cut idea it will help you to give a clear understanding so what comes under linear aristotle laswell's uh, sorry laswell's model shannon weaver model and berlo's smcr model so when we talk about aristotle model so it here the golden rule is to excel in public speaking seminar lectures where the sender makes a point very clearly with impressive content passing on the message you know and here the sender is sender is active whereas the receiver is passive so your speaker speaks audiences creating an effect on the audiences now when we go to the last wells communication model it indicates five components that is communicator who message says what channel that is medium to whom that is the receiver and with what effect okay that is the impact then we have uh, shannon and weaver model which is the most popular model which is widely accepted where it indicates you know the message originally uh, ac actually originates from the person who gets or who has the information or who gets the thought so the sender is the source of information or informative source you can say the information gets transmitted from brain to mouth and it comes to you know uh, comes out as a signal which reaches reaches the receptacle after joining hands and you know several noises and other disturbance so here the receptacle passes on the message to the final destination or other uh, minds to the to the individual so you can see the uh, diagrammatic presentation that is send the information source encoder its transmitter the channel the reception and the destination berlo's model that is the source mess message channel and receiver under source you have you know the skills attitude knowledge system and culture 
message refers content elements treatment structure and code channel you know hearing seeing touching smelling and tasting whereas receiver talks about the skills attitude knowledge and social system so aristotle model you know puts the speaker into central position whereas here okay berlo's model consider emotional aspect of the message that is very important it uh, operates with the S smcr model so it's every uh, acronym is defined what it stands for then i have just made a, a like for example a revision like uh, so aristotle model as i said it gives looks at the elements that is speaker speech occasion target and the effect last wells it is you know it looks at the questions who what channel which channel whom and what effects shannon model which indicates noise okay or uh, altering or disruption and berlo's model again the five, the steps that is s uh, four steps s m c r then interactive model where we have osgood shams model and wesley and maclean model so osgood's uh, model which talks about you know attempts that in uh, in the sense that it does not allow the conventional pattern of communication so here the uh, communication is described as dynamic a dynamic it means you which has which is as per the interactive way or you know with the with the help of uh, the source or, or the moment so here the the message is very much you know presented in the dynamic form which is very very important when it comes to you know uh, the process then we have wesley's maclean lins model so basically this model is the one model which gives signals from the surroundings and the process and communication it begins with receiving the messages rather than sending so in this model it is not necessary that signal coming from the surroundings are intentionally sent to start the process of the message now like for example here uh, sometimes events might accidentally occur or they may there can be you know they that can be accidentally received this signals can be received any time and communication can begin any time so there is a common loophole of this model of communication that uh, uh, when the information where the information sometimes gets modified when it is passed from one person to another to conclude this model support requires you know initiation of communication from receiving messages rather than sending so this is something which is very uh, unique which can be kept in mind very well okay so again osgood's i have you know summarized it osgood's is a model which looks like a reciprocal showing how we can have an encoding decoding interpretation during real time and wesley's and macklin model it's influenced by the culture by the environment and the personal factors so last one transactional model which is uh, white's uh, again white's model dance Hel helical's model and brandlun's mo transactional model so brandlun's transactional model is multi layered feedback system so there is a continuous you can say uh you know just a second yes so there is a continuous uh, process where the sender and receiver interchanges you know equally the messages passing takes place in the form of feedback you know from the parties a feedback from one is the message for the other so it is layered okay whereas the white's model and gin white's model recognize feedback as a part of communication process here it is described as sequential that is cyclic you can say there are eight stages so it starts with symbolize sorry thinking symbolizing expressing transmitting receiving decoding feedback meant or uh, feedbacking and mentoring you can please keep this uh, steps you know uh, handy with you in case if the question comes because model questions are coming very frequently seen nowadays so you can keep this you know handy with you helical model so helical model evolves with the birth like you know this model which evolves with the birth and it con it continues till a longer period of time so this model is a border prospective and uh, from the day it includes all the individual activities from day 1 till day so it it accumulates with the span of you know uh, a span which affects the individual process of communication and in turn which goes forward and also depends upon the past activities so the child after some years the communication continues it goes on and you know till date currently it is into existence so here also I have given a summary table so it recognizes feedback as a part of communication process it helps to you know it is a circular process helical model which uh, can be represented by the helical spiral and brandlun's model it is which plays in private and public clues that impacts the messages so yes this is what we have done with respect to the all communication models
then we have a new comps model so on this model question was also seen so new in the last cycle only so new comps model you can say basically it is triangular in shape okay uh, here it explains the role of communication in the society or a social relationship so communication maintains equilibrium between the society and it works accordingly so the topic message and the receiver example i have given to understand so a playing the role of government b playing the role of public but both you know both of them has to be concerned and both of them has to be uh, interactive in order to understand what exactly is happening so this model significance you know uh, the demo, uh, that is it increasing need of information it talks about um, democracy democracy people need in order to get a, information from the social environment on to understand the problem to know the problems so that's all we have done for communication and uh, make sure that you are revising you are seeing this entire video in one go otherwise the, if you break the link it will be difficult to at least recall all the you know important things which are needed for from the examination point of view thank you